So anyone just walking in right now and seeing the project may not look like we've got much done so far. But it's been a long road up to here. We cut down some trees, we milled the lumber ourselves, we put up the boathouse, we had to move the boathouse, and yeah, we did a little laying around. But now things are getting interesting. So I just left work, I'm on my way to go pick up Grandpappy. He's gonna go for a ride with me down to Southwest Connecticut. And we're gonna pick up the keel timber. So I'm super, super psyched. I've been waiting for this day for a while. Uh, this place called New England Naval Timbers, run by this guy Duke. Uh, sounds like a sweet guy, I can't wait to meet him. Um, he cut our keel timber for us today out of some giant white oak. So we're gonna go down, give him a stack of cash, and uh, hopefully meet up with this guy Noah who's gonna truck the keel timber back for us because certainly can't tow that giant beam behind my little Subaru. Uh, yeah, so big day, super big boat day, very psyched. So we've made it. We are now here at New England Naval Timbers. Say hi, Grandpappy. Hi there. <laughs> Long trip, but we're here. We're uh, here. Yeah. So let's see what we got here. Which always looks like some big pieces of white oak. Let's go wander around and see if we can find Duke. All right, so Duke finally met up with us. He was uh, having his supper. But here is our here timber. That is a big old chunk of white oak. Duke and Graham's happy seem to be hitting it off. I thought they would. But that's 53 feet. That's amazing. Yeah, 2,500 board feet in one tree. Wow. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. And that, um, there's, one, there's one limb that came out, but when we saw it, that'll be on the bottom. So it'll be a one-piece keel, a really gorgeous keel from the top. And then that bump is probably like 35 feet up. So it'll still wow. be a very big piece before you hit that. That's cool. Yeah, it's a big yeah. bump. And that one that I took your keel out of was the second best. This would be first, and that was the second best. Cool. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, I start at 7 in the morning, and um, I fall asleep at 7 at night. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what keeps me going. Sure. You yeah. Know, I can't. I can't retire, you know. I'm old enough to give it. What are you going to retire? Are you kidding me? Retire? <laughs> Where's have, the fun in that? There's no fun in it. You know, you have to, you got to have projects to do. If, I mean, retirement's all right if you got stuff to do. Yeah. And if you don't do it, it's going to be a short retirement. Yeah, that's true. Really? Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the body wasn't made to sit around and do nothing. That's it's, right. It, it's a muscle. If you don't work it, you're going to lose it. We're kind yeah. of set in motion when we're born, and you got to just keep going and moving. Yeah. And now I had to haul a lot of wood for this guy's boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, help him with it. Well, that's going to be a major trip you're taking. Yeah, yeah. And now, where are you going to launch your boat? That is a question that I don't have an answer to at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll get there. I mean, it would be so cool to be able to put it in the Connecticut up by We Are, where yeah. we are, but there's too many obstacles on the way down. Yeah. Um, so we could put it south of Windsor Locks and Windsor float Locks out from there. The, yeah, that's um, right. That's or we could right. just truck it out to the Cape or Southern Maine. I'm not yeah. really sure. I'm kind of hoping that by the time we get to that point, some boat yard somewhere is going to say, hey, we, we kind of want the publicity, like, yeah, right. come right. do the launch here. I mean, we're, we're years away from having to figure that out anyways. Yeah. Now, how did you get into boat building? Is that something you studied, or? Uh, not really. Um, I've never built a boat before. Yeah. I don't even know how to sail. If we're going to be truthfully honest here. Um, <laughs> it's courageous. <laughs> we all learn at some point. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So building a wooden boat has always kind of been on my bucket list, yeah. and then I've just been slowly acquiring the tools and Good reading you know. about it and learning the knowledge. And then a couple of years ago, my buddy bought a portable sawmill. Yeah. And we've got. 48 acres, which is mostly trees. Good. I was like, well, I can get the vast majority of the lumber for free. Yeah. Um, so that's a huge step in the right direction. And then I have the tools, and I'm a halfway decent woodworker. Yeah. So then the only thing stopping me at that point is me. Yeah. Do it now. You're young, you know. When I was in my 20s, um, I went to university here in Connecticut, and uh, in summers I, I worked in Labrador as a guide in the wilderness. That's awesome. And then after I graduated, I lived up there for a while, full time. But I'm so glad I did that mm -hmm. when I was young. Because when you, you can't do it later on. As yeah. life goes on, it's just things, business and family and all that stuff. But, you know, do it when you're young. Yeah. That's the time. And it's your, you, that's when you're strongest. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can really take some hits. hits. Some, you know, yeah. <laughs> some setbacks. Hey, I am 
two months off a broken ankle here. <laughs> wow. So where did this uh, where did this stick come from? Cambridge, New York. Cambridge, New York. Yeah, the, the woodlot was is, has been owned by the family since 1812. Oh wow. In generations. Yeah. And uh, this group that uh, is it, there, this generation that's here now, they're like my age or older. Mm -hmm. And they had to pay some taxes, so they sold they sold me ten trees. Okay. And they, they got you know they got they paid their taxes for a few years. years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest oaks we had that I cut were about a little over two feet at the bottom. Yeah. So they're still well, that's almost nice. hundred year old trees. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you got all your frame stock. I got all my frame stock. I got all my floor timbers. I got all my deck beams. I got all the white pine for the interior, for the ceiling, and for the deck. Nice. Um, the only other thing that I have to source is the Atlantic cedar for the planking. Yeah, that's and tough. And some tough. spruce for a mast. Yeah. Apparently, there's a, a mill in uh, the Northeast Kingdom in Vermont right. that that's say, supposed that was, to that's have it. some good stuff. Yeah. So once we get a little bit farther along here, and we're you know, starting to put the frames in and starting yeah. to think about planking, I'll give them a call and a few other folks. There's also, I went to school in a Unity College up in Maine. Oh yeah, yeah. And right next door to Unity is Thorndike, and there's actually a mill up there that specializes in Atlantic white cedar for boat building. Yeah. You, you so I was gonna yeah. talk to them as well. And that yeah. would be really cool, because that's where the buddy who's building the boat with me, we met up at Unity where we went to school together. Cool. So to go back up there to get the, uh, the planking would be kind of a neat, like, yeah. full circle for us. Yeah, good. So, yeah, we got some options. So what would you, what would your guess for a weight on that be? Your ballpark in it. Well, it's, I think it's 441 feet times six, whatever that is. It's going to be I'd, over 3,000 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, it'll be fun. We've got a, a big shindig on Saturday. We're having a lot of people come over to like celebrate my birthday and us getting the keel timber. And we're gonna have everybody before we do dinner grab onto it and help us carry it into the boathouse. You're kidding? No. How many people? Uh, we're gonna be a lot. <laughs> oh, I like to see that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we'll shoot some video of it for sure. Yeah, pretty damn cool. As Steve said to Duke, we were planning an open house. So that meant we need to get everything cleaned up and organized. We need to build some cribbing in order to hold the keel timber in the boathouse, and that will be where the keel timber will live after we've moved it at the open house. Much of this project is centered on how we do things. Steve and I want to do this right. Sometimes that means doing it the old-fashioned way. When it came to the food, that meant local and healthy food. And for us, we thought a good old-fashioned pig roast would be a perfect way to do it. We got live animals and we butchered them ourselves. That means clean, healthy meat. Much better than what you would find at a big grocery store. Again, we wanted to do this right. So Steve took it one step further and welded up the spit that we would use for the day. Didn't work out perfectly, but we'll get all the kinks worked out next time. It's alive! Yeah, it's going. After all that work, the keel timber finally showed up. Oh my god, it's so beautiful! Oh my god! As you can tell, this is a massive piece of wood. It was no small undertaking getting that off the trailer. But we made quick work of it.
hard to describe the feeling of finally having this wonderful piece of wood at our fingertips. The one that will become Arabella's backbone. Finally the big day arrived, we were ready to move that keel timber into the boathouse. We got some friends and we did some preliminary movements with the tractor just to get it kind of aligned and ready to go before we asked everybody else to help us get it into the boathouse. Before getting everybody gathered up to move the keel timber into the boathouse, Steve did a talk about the lofting and about the whole process up until now. Unfortunately, I've been having some mic problems on my camera, and all the audio that I captured for that was pretty terrible. Hopefully, this mistake will not be making again. It was really great to see everybody hanging off of Steve's every word. We are just blown away with how excited people are about this project and how interested everyone seems to be. Steve pulled out the plans and showed everybody how the lofting process happens how we draw them out full scale on the floor. He also pulled out some battens to explain how to spring a curve. He then talked about how we take the patterns on the floor in order to build the molds, which will then be the shape of the boat. The restoration of the 100-year-old bandsaw has and will be one of the cornerstones of our project. Steve talked about the whole restoration process and how the bandsaw actually works, as well as going into the details of the VFD that we put on there. The VFD, the variable frequency drive, is what allows the bandsaw to start slowly and not slam into gear. It can also be used to speed up the bandsaw or slow it down as we are using it. Finally, a quick demonstration of the different blades. How we can resaw lumber, as well as cut curves with a thinner blade. Steve then asked for volunteers to come up and try it out, but it seems like it's a little bit more intimidating than we thought, and only one person took us up on that offer. After the talks, we got everybody mobilized. We set up cribbing underneath the keel timber and set up rails with pipes on it in order to roll the keel timber into the boathouse. You would think that a piece of wood that large, weighing more than 3,000 pounds, would be just about impossible to move. But with everybody on it, we managed to start rolling it into the boathouse. It was amazing to see everybody work together. We had a variety of people at the party. There was anybody from four years old to 75 years old. It was great watching everybody work together. Of course, maybe not the kids, we kept them away, at safe distance, and all safe. But everybody worked together to help us move that thing, and it went so smoothly. It was an amazing, amazing sight to see, and we are very, very thankful to everybody who came. Ready? 
smoothly though of course we had one person who had a close call <laughs> you all right jeff <laughs> jeff is your pants stuck <laughs> so no you want to move this stuck. move jeff, this pile jeff stuck <laughs> <laughs> just move the pile behind me please <laughs> somebody get jeff away where's, where's the pipe thing Cut off his leg and get it off. It's a brand new pants, man! <laughs> Watch again. Yeah, 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 there we go. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. No casualty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what kind of pants, Jeff? What kind of pants? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> We estimate we had nearly 100 people at this party, and we are thankful to each and every one of you. And to all of you that weren't able to make it, don't worry about it, we'll be doing this again, and we would be happy to have you in the future. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoyed the video.